I think that what happened on Friday was that many market participants had got overexcited about short-term rates after the January Fed meeting. There was a whole lot of people saying four times they're going to raise rates in 2018. I don't think the economy can take that. And I think the Fed will remain data dependent under Chairman Powell. So my expectation is that two rate rises in 2018 are more likely than four. And I think that with the general deflationary environment, which we've talked about before, coming from technology, that will be just fine. I think that was the trigger for the sell-off, which I think is actually just a healthy shakeout. Markets never go smoothly up and to the right. If this goes from about 6% to a 10% shakeout, even a bit more, I don't think that really matters. And it certainly doesn't take away from my basic buy the dips philosophy that I still have. Is this enough of a dip right now? I mean, do you actually feel as if it's time to say, okay, fine, there's a little bit of a, of a discount can, already? You can probably start trickling it in. But, I mean, the prospective P.E. ratio is a bit below 18. The long-term average is 16. You know, even a 5 or 6% fall from here would take you to the long-term average at a time when the outlook for earnings is really rather good. Yeah. So I actually think that, uh, you know, we, even if we don't buy right now, um, I think you run the risk if you don't buy right now that it will recover, but I do think you should be trickling money in rather than filling your boots with the market at this point. Scott, uh, it was pretty common to say that uh, last year was so strong and so calm for stocks that we were due for some kind of a higher volatility type environment, maybe more of a two-way tape. Is this just what we're getting right now or do you think something perhaps has changed uh, about the, the market's path here? Yeah, I really don't, Mike. I think uh, a lot of this move is, you know, from mid-November until about 10 days ago, the S&P 500 was up 12%. I mean, that's basically a vertical move. You know, to cough up 4% of that move, I think, is very minor. Um, I think, um, you know, you could maybe start trickling in money. I mean, let's face it, retail investors, they've been underinvested in stocks for a long time. They're finally getting interested. Uh, they have plenty of cash on the sidelines. And so, you know, we're recommending for our clients, I mean, you still want to lean towards industrials, consumer discretionary, financials, things that are going to benefit from a uh, uh, continuation of this recovery. And you need to be stepping in on the way down. Now, if this pullback uh, would have happened over a three or four week period, people would be feeling a little better. But, you know, right now you got a lot of retail investors out there that are spooked because it happened in a couple of days. I think that's probably a natural feeling. Um, they've been waiting for pullbacks. Here it is. You've got to start trickling it in. But, you know, if you look at technical support, I mean, you know, you're seeing a 50-day moving average at 27.15. I mean, almost certainly we're going to test that. Um, that's not much of a magnet, but it's a little bit of one. But, you know, when you go, when you look further out, I mean, the 200-day moving average is down at 25.30. It has been a long, long time since we touched the 200-day mo moving average. And, you know, to, to trade a little bit lower than this, uh, you know, not a ton lower, but lower, um, I think retail investors should welcome that. I mean, markets just don't go straight up forever. We're finally having a pullback. You need to have a plan. You need to be ready to step in. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.